robo beads, octo arms, even mechanical cockroaches. Every day, Robert Wood uses the natural world as inspiration for each of his new inventions, an approach known as biomimicry. Nature's had hundreds of millions of years to evolve solutions to things like locomotion in cluttered areas or flights. If you come up with a task that you need a robot to do, you can look into the animal kingdom and find uh, interesting solutions that you can draw from. Robert is a professor of engineering and applied sciences in Cambridge, Massachusetts. He and his team at Harvard University's Microbiotics Lab are currently working on tiny robotic winged insects, known as robo-bees. Our team is working on creating a colony of autonomous robotic bees. We envision that 20 or so years down the road when these things actually exist, they could be quite useful for applications where you wouldn't want to put a human or an animal. Hazardous environment exploration, search and rescue, space exploration, assisted agriculture. What I think makes our small robots unique is that if you are small, then maybe you can get into little nooks and crannies that, uh, that other robots could not get into. But first comes the challenge of building a robot the size of an insect. By developing new types of robots, we have to develop all the core technologies from scratch. What we don't want to do is have hundreds of components that are the size of human hairs assembled under a microscope by hand. That would be very difficult. So we use origami as an inspiration for some of the processes that we've developed. So just like you would if you're folding a paper airplane, we do the same thing, but it's, it's thin, resilient, strong plastics as opposed to paper. And once Robert's creations are assembled, it's time to test them. There's so many things that could go wrong with these tests and do go wrong with these tests. So a wing could break or a wing could fly off. The actuators could crack and fail or even catch fire. But the nice thing about that is if we are able to sort of extract all of the motion, we understand exactly what happened. We can back engineer what it was that made it crash such that maybe the next flight would be successful. We build, we test, we build, we test. If you don't fail, you don't learn enough. We build, we test, we build, we test. For everything that works is tens or hundreds of things that don't. So failure isn't really failure in that sense because we learned something. And their patience pays off. Oh, that's a beautiful flight. With every failure, they get one step closer to building the next big thing. This device happens to be one of the fastest robots on Earth, if you normalize to its body length. Twice as fast as Usain Bolt. We can change its gait, we can change how it's running, whether it's a trot or a run or a crawl. As these things get smaller, gravity starts to matter less. And so we can experiment with different ways to have them climb on different surfaces and his inventions may even reach us at home. In our everyday lives, if I want a robot to help me in my home, if I wanted to cook me dinner, if I wanted in my hospital, we want to do this in a gentle way. So if you want to interact with something that is very, very soft, well, one of the things you can do, make the thing that's gripping it soft too. So we design squishy fingers for robotics. So whether it's with speed, or maneuvering a delicate squeeze. Robotics could soon change the way we go about our daily lives. I think the most exciting thing about robotics now is how close we are to it really positively impacting our lives. Science fiction has been promising us a lot over the course of all of our lives. Now it's actually starting to come to fruition.